Hello, this is Mr. Fleming, and this video is for my upper level classes. That would be Art 3, Art 4, and AP. We'll be working on portraits, and we should have several studies done within our sketchbook at this point, and we should be leading to a final draft. I gave you three options for the portrait. One was to do a portrait from a photograph. The other was to do a live portrait. And the third option was a symbolic portrait. Now, um, the live portrait is where I want to spend some time on, and I have gone through some studies in class working on a live model, and you should also. I do understand that models are not easy sometimes to come by at the, your own homes, and that a photograph might be necessary, and I do understand that. But I also want to stress here, I don't think it's the same. I do believe in direct observation and drawing, and that direct observation will improve your skills both as a draftsman and as an artist. But we have to work within the frameworks of this 2020 pandemic hybrid model. And that's unfortunate, but it is the reality we have to work with. But I think it can be done if you make the time to study. Um, in your sketchbook, we talk about different types of portraits. And I should see you studying the skull. Um, as it sits. Now, as you're looking here, there are no eyes in the drawing because I'm really working on the structure. There's no hair, and this really isn't anybody in particular. It is just the setup of how do I study the human face. And here we have what's called a three-quarter view, which means the cheekbone here is actually closer to me in space than the tip of the nose. This eye here is in foreshortening, so keep that in mind. It's not the same eye. It does go back in space. We only see one nostril here. We only see one ear on this side. But also look at the atmosphere behind it. I'm trying to project the skull into space by increasing a back shadow. You need to take some sort of artistic license when you're doing your drawing. If you're doing a live drawing, you should set up a light source. And so the shadows are consistent on your face. But do not forget the space behind the subject. That is also very important in making a nice portrait. This one here, again, it is simply a study. It's not male. It's not female. It is simply a skull with skin wrapped around it. Please take special notice to the nose. It is really difficult to create the nose without reflective light. Light is bouncing off the cheek, causing shadows. It's caught bouncing off the upper lip, causing shadows. And you need to make sure you really study the nose to be able to make it look like it's projecting into space. I kept the eyes without an iris or a pupil or a shape within the eye. I want to see that it's a sphere that sits in a socket. And that when you do your drawing, the lightest part of your drawing should be the white of the eyes. You may have highlights if you have a light shining on it. But that eye should be deep within a socket with skin wrapped around it and the eyeball is wet, and you want to pay attention to that. Keep in mind also here, we have direct lighting here, so a shadow is falling on top of the eye. There was a shadow underneath the nose. There was a shadow under the upper lip. The lower lip tends to be lighter, and then a shadow under the lower lip, and then a shadow under the chin. Again, I have an atmosphere behind the skull to help the skull come out and forward. This is not a person in particular. I am just studying before I get to my portraits. When you're looking at a portrait and you're trying to get a likeness, the easiest likeness to get is one that is in profile. Please pay attention to the eye. The eyes are really a very different shape looking in profile than looking directly at it or a, um, a three-quarter view. It's not an oval. It is a cone shape with a rounded edge. That's got to be understood to get that properly done. Make sure you also pay attention to that contour line of the face. That's where the likeness is going to come out. But again, the atmosphere around the figure is very important to me. You should also probably study in key areas like the eyes, the nose. How does the line work? How does the shadow work? These should be done before you start your final draft. Now, the final draft, I do want to have a portrait done. It could also be a symbolic one. And give me one second. I'm going to get my symbolic one right here. So, this would be a good example of a symbolic one. We have many different images here. We have a young girl, we have a paintbrush, we have a dragon, uh, we have a series of flowers. 
this is the person's own personification within imagery. It only relates to her. This is a good idea for a drawing if you're trying to present something that represents yourself, but you don't want to do a self-portrait. This doesn't exclude you having to have a portrait in your portfolio. I think a portrait and figure drawings, these are just essential for other people to assess whether you should be going into upper-level art classes or perhaps you need more basic training in the draftsman quality that everyone needs to become a visual artist. Now, when you do one, this is given to me. This is a great drawing. This was given to me by a freshman. It's a good drawing, but it's not a good portrait for many reasons. Um, one is the eyes are completely disproportionate to the skull. Beautiful, but it's not naturalistic. Also, there was no time taken for the top of the head whatsoever. It's still a very interesting drawing, but the proportions aren't right. It really is a drawing more than it is a portrait taken from a photograph or even from, from still life. Great drawing, great image, but it's not really a portrait study. Um, the profile is the easiest to get a likeness. Um, this is done live. This is done direct. Please keep in mind, this is a tough one. When you're drawing directly in, looking directly at a person, there can be a staring quality, like you're looking to a mirror, that can be unsettling for the viewer and can take away from the quality of the portrait itself. But it can be done. It is dynamic. I just find it the most difficult. I think the three-quarter view is a much better way to go. It gives both the um, a naturalistic quality, but it doesn't have the staring quality. Even if the person is looking at you because the head is turned just a little bit, it's not quite so unsettling. Keep in mind where your shadows should be, within the hair and behind the hair, and don't forget that atmosphere. So at this point, kids, you should be looking at your sketchbook and then moving on to a final draft. I should see some work done in your sketchbook as far as your development. And there should be a high quality portrait done, whether it's live or from a photograph. You can do both. And if you don't want to do both a live and a photograph, you have the option of doing a symbolic one also. I am looking at um, November 4th, next Monday, as a deadline for this project. Um, and we'll go from there. So make art. It won't make itself. Thank you for listening.